What's up guys, it's Doc and this is the first video in a series for the Nax Ramus Boss Guides that had the steak and potatoes of what you're going to need for success in Nax. Stick around to the end to make sure you don't miss out on any pro tips and don't forget to like and subscribe. As well, check out our live stream over on Twitch, Dokken underscore TV with the link down in the description below and uh, let's get to it. Starting out in Nax, most guilds are going to want to down the spider wing first. That is, it is traditionally dubbed the easiest of the four wings in Nax. Looking at the map of Nax Ramus, you'll see that Anubricon is only a short distance from the entrance and the first boss you'll encounter within the spider wing. Anubricon is a crypt lord who is accompanied by crypt fiends and swarms of scarabs. Anubricon has a few unique attacks, first one being impale attack which will target anyone on his threat list. The attack shoots about 35 yards outward from Anubricon and about 10 yards wide. The attack can deal up to 4,000 physical damage to anyone that it strikes, as well as a struck player is thrown into the air and will subsequently take falling damage. A few things you want to take note of for the impale attack is to make sure that you're spread out within the area um, that is designated as kind of your safety zone, unless you need to handle crypt guards or scarabs that happen to come up throughout the fight. If you can outrange it, I suggest you do so. Just keep that in mind. Um, he'll target you, not necessarily hit you with the ability, but anyone that is between you and the boss will potentially be hit with that. It's also important to have over 4,000 health in this fight is to not be instantly killed if you are struck. As well, uh, the fall damage can be mitigated with safe fall, feline grace, or slow fall. The second notable ability is the Locust Swarm. Approximately every 70 to 120 seconds, Anubricon will cast a spell. It's a caster-based AoE that moves as he moves. It's very similar to a Paladin Aura. Also, when activated, Anubricon's movement speed is greatly reduced. If a player is caught in the area effect of the swarm, it will apply a stacking DOT on them, which does upwards of 1,200 damage per tick. More stacks equals more damage, and if you're affected by those stacks, you're also going to be silenced. Also, one thing to make sure you're note of, particularly the off tanks, is when a Nubrican casts a Locust Swarm, another Crypt Guard will spawn uh, from its starting position. When the swarm spell is cast, the main tank and others will have specific actions that they need to take, and we'll discuss those in just a few moments. The encounter begins with two Crypt Guard adds already spawned in the room with the Nubricon. These Crypt Guards have the ability to cleave, and will place a stacking poison DOT on whoever happens to be tanking them. Also, the most annoying part is they have an AoE webbing ability that they will apply to targets that are in close proximity to them. Once these Crypt Guards are defeated, within a few seconds, likely no more than 10 to 15, Anubricon will cause the corpses of them to explode, spawning about 10 scarabs, which will start to attack people once they're spawned. They do hit cloth wearers fairly hard, approximately about 400 damage per hit, depending, give or take a little bit. A couple of tips here is to make sure that uh, the off tanks that are grabbing these uh, crypt guards at the beginning have a predetermined position to put them in or to tank them in. I would say to make sure you face them away from the raid and recommend tanking them on the left side of the room facing the ring of slime or towards the wall. That'll help prevent other players from getting cleaved. The off tanks should use free action potions on the pool and it would be prudent to have a second warrior ready to pick up the crypt guards should the first tank somehow get webbed too soon or lose aggro. Once they die, I would pre-plan to have a major two standing on the corpse location for the crypt guards. That way as soon as the scarabs do spawn, they're on it right away with the Nova and they start to AoE through those. Another side note though, if you do lose any players during this encounter, you can also cause the dead player's corpse to explode and you will get about five scarabs per player that dies. Once the Crypt Guards are defeated, all the damage dealers can focus on Anubricon himself for the time being. The key is to watch for his emote for the Locust Swarm where he kind of dips his head downwards and all of his, uh, his wings start to flutter. When this happens, the raid's going to need to kind of leap into action. It's recommended that the DPS move to the opposite side of the room from where he's currently being tanked. I would suggest again towards that uh, left or west side of the room where they killed the first Crypt Guards and uh, they'll take the other Crypt Guard over there and kill it that spawns during the swarm while the tank, the hunter, and the tank healers are doing what they have to do. So what you have is you have the main tank in the, in the position uh, just to the side, to the right side of where Nubricon is at when you start to fight. The tank will then uh, see the swarm is impending because he starts to cast and run away from Anubricon. At this time, when he's a safe distance to not be struck by a melee attack, the hunter 
that is positioned in the main tank group will turn on aspect of the pack to give an increased run speed to that tank and help him scurry across the outside of the room there. Once you get to the other side, um, you wait there till the swarm stops. He'll still have threat on the tank, comes to the tank. I recommend you go towards the entrance door a slight bit, turn him around, and position him in uh, an inverse of where he was when you began the fight. And what this will do is allow the main tank to run back across the room the direction he came from. And this gives the healers and the DPSers a consistency. They're always going to be on that left side. They're always going to be positioned in the centers. If you look at the map, you see the main tank healers are going to be in the center there, outside of the swarm range, but close enough to heal the tank. And this just takes one more task off of their plate to have to worry about. Some people will try to go the whole way around the room, and I do not recommend that. Here we are, guys, in the spider wing, approaching a Nubricon's door, making our way in. Going to pre-position ourselves, mark the ads up. I'm targeting up on a Nubricon. There they go. The off tanks are going to grab the two ads. I'm picking up a Nubricon. I'm going to move him to the uh, the far side of the room, approximately where he started. The reason being is you want to make sure that uh, you have plenty of run space here, and you want to make sure that swarm is uh, impacting as little as the room as possible. So I'm kind of in position here, getting ready. Uh, if you take note, the uh, timer up top for the potential incoming swarm. There you go, you see an impale going off. Now as soon as those ads are done, there you go, you're going to see DPS making their way over. They're starting to get in here and start, uh, you know, doing their job, doing their thing, throwing up numbers. There goes another impale. You can see he's periodically just throwing those out there. So he's going to be hitting a lot of the melee when they're stacked up like that. So you can use, you know, as much of the space as is available, but uh, a lot of the melee are still going to get hit with that. There goes another one. Then you got to remember, we're, we're looking at the timer here. It's counting down. We're getting pretty close. But uh, once that timer hits zero, it's a window. Remember, you have the 70 to about 120 second window of time from which he will actually cast the Locust Swarm. So uh, one thing that's recommended, too, is if you're not super familiar with the fight, is as soon as that timer gets down to right around that you know one second, two second mark, the DPS can go ahead and head out of there before uh, the Swarm goes off so they don't risk being caught by it. But if you're experienced and familiar with the fight, you may be able to stay in a little bit longer and maximize that DPS. Now when he does cast that, everyone's going to have to get out or they're going to get that uh, stacking DOT and they're also going to be silenced. So um, you'll see here, in just a few moments we're going to turn and make our run. Here it goes, he's casting it, now we're making the run. Now if you notice, there's no uh, hunter with the aspect in my group helping me with speed because I've done the fight several times and it wasn't uh, wasn't a requirement but it's definitely a big help if you can have that to get the lead on him. So we're going to go back toward the door side here. See the doors closed up. I'm going to let him come just beyond that po the position where I was tanking and walk right through him. Boom, there you go. So he's turned around. He's kind of in a reflective position from the opposite side there. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, continue this process. Once you've seen this much of the fight, you've basically seen what's required to get this done. I want to thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for watching. Thumbs up, comments if you've got any pro tips that we missed. Or otherwise, feel free to tune into our live streams at uh, Dokken underscore TV on Twitch. Thank you guys very much. And until next time, have a good one. And as always, we'll see you.